and welcome to the Vention Assembly Series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we're going to cover the connection and configuration of Vention's machine motion controller with your deployed actuator system. In our case, we'll be doing this for our 3-axis system that we have here. It has two parallel heavy-duty enclosed timing belts as its x-axis and enclosed ball screws for its y and z axes. The setup process can be broken down into three main parts wiring connections, configuration, and testing. This process should be completed twice, once for your actuator systems and control components, and another for your safety system. In this video, we'll be focusing on the actuator system, starting off by hooking up our motors, sensors, pendant, and other related hardware. Now for every bench and order containing a machine motion, you will receive an automation system diagram. This will be your guide for hooking up all cabling leading from your controller to your motors and other auxiliary systems. An additional resource that we'd recommend is visiting the webpage vention.io slash deploy. This page gives you access to guides, videos, and documents that will help you with your deployment process. Now following the automation diagram, we can start by wiring our machine. But before doing so, you should make sure that your machine motion controller is powered off. I'll be showing how to wire everything to the motors that we have here, and later showing how it's done on the three axis. Let's begin by wiring the controller. We'll start off by connecting the motor to the controller using the supplied servo motor cable. The larger cable accommodates the power supply to the motors and functionality of other systems, such as the end stop sensors, power off brakes, and the built in encoders. We'll plug the female side into the motor and the male side into the drive port of the machine motion controller as seen in our automation diagram. Next, we can hook up our end stop sensors directly into the motor housing. Again, referencing the wiring automation diagram, we can see which sensor will go into port A and which sensor will go into port B. Moving on, if your actuator doesn't have any end stop sensors, commonly seen in continuous move systems such as belt conveyors, rotary actuators, or even dual driven axes, these jumpers here must be used for the system to function properly. They also plug into the sensor ports of your motor housing. In our case, we'll be using them on one of our parallel enclosed timing belts as we only need sensors on one of the two actuators. Finally, if you're using a power off brake, as is the case with most vertical actuators, you can connect it to the brake port using the associated cable like so. You can then repeat these steps for each of your other actuators with all of the required cabling. Another good thing to note is that when wiring a dual-driven axis, it's recommended to hook up the two motor cables next to one another on the controller to assist with the configuration process later on. If you have any additional systems, such as push-button modules or I.O. expanders, they would be connected here using the four control ports. For now, I'll go ahead and wire our three-axis system using what we've just demonstrated. With the actuators all hooked up, we can now plug in our interface of choice that will be later used to configure our machine. This can either be a machine motion pendant that we have here, or a computer. If you're using a pendant, you would plug it into the combined safety in pendant port. If you're using a computer, you would plug it into the PC port in the top corner using an Ethernet cable. We recommend using the supplied Ethernet to USB adapter for faster connection. It should be noted that if you plan to control your system via Ethernet, we highly recommend installing an e-stop module to the safety in port of your controller and a jumper to the safety in port of the e-stop module. Once everything is wired, you can hook up your machine motion controller to a power source. If 
you look at the top of the controller on our machine, you'll find the power on button and an LED light indicator. Turn on the controller by pressing the power button. You can see here that the button will light up once pressed. There are four different states for the LED. White indicates that the controller is ready to turn on or is in the process of booting up. Solid green indicates that the system is booted and ready to run. Blinking green indicates that an application is currently running and red indicates that the system is in e-stop mode. It should be noted that the system will take approximately three minutes to boot up. If you've turned on the machine, but it's not powering on, double check that all the connections are done properly. If you're still having issues, feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to troubleshoot them with you. Now that everything is turned on, we can configure a three axis system. To start the configuration process on a pendant, all you need to do is plug it into the correct port on your controller and wait for the controller to boot up. If you're doing so from a computer, once hooked up and booted on, navigate to your internet browser of choice, we recommend using Google Chrome, and input the IP address of the controller into the URL search bar. You can then press enter to reach the main screen of the bench and control system. From here, the configuration process is identical between the pendant and a computer. The first thing you'll be prompted to do is release all e-stop buttons and perform a release on the software stop. Make sure the machine is safe to use with all operators at a safe distance. Then you can disengage all e-stop buttons and press the release and reset button. This will land you in the control center. From there, we'll then navigate to the machine configuration tile. Here is where you'll set up your controller, actuators, as well as any inputs or outputs you have. In the first menu on the left, under controller settings, you can rename your controller as well as select which version you have, either a OneDrive or a 4Drive. For us, we'll leave the name as is and verify that the 4Drive option has been selected. After this, we'll switch over to the actuator menu on the left to configure the hardware. For us, we're going to start off by configuring our Y axis. To add an actuator, click on Add Actuator in the bottom left-hand corner. From here, you can rename your actuator to a specific axis or something that is more descriptive of its function. To the right of that, in the drop-down menus, you will then select the type of actuator you're configuring and the size of motor being used. If you have a power-off brake or gearbox installed, indicate this via the appropriate checkboxes. We'll rename our actuator Y-axis and select the enclosed ball screw and the large servo motor. Under advanced settings, you can double check that the current is set to 10 amps and that the tuning profile is set to default. We recommend to not change these settings unless otherwise indicated in your automation system diagram. Finally, under drive settings in the top right corner, you can edit the motor direction to match the information given in your automation system diagram and click save. Once done, press apply configuration. You can then repeat this process for all other actuators. If your system has two parallel mechanically joined actuators or two motors that then need to be driven in sync, you'll only need to configure one of the two actuators in the configuration page. I'll be doing this for the parallel and closed timing belts that we have on our three axis. First, add a single new actuator in the configuration window and configure it by following the standard procedure. From there, click on Drive Settings in the top right corner in the Configuration page. Once open, using the Actuator Name drop-down menu, select the name for the two drives you would like to sync. Oftentimes, the name will be the axis of the two actuators you are powering. One thing to make sure of is that the drives you have selected match the real-life wiring of your system. It should be noted that the two drives that you are syncing must have the exact same mechanical setup in terms of motor size, actuator type and length, as well as if there is a gearbox or power-off brake present. We recommend double checking your automation diagram to ensure that the motor direction is correct, as it's common to see two synced motors that rotate in opposite directions. In the bottom row, select which drive will behave as the parent and which one will behave as the child. If you're not sure which one is which, the parent will most likely have the actuator with the sensors attached and the child will have the jumpers in place. Now, if you've configured your entire system but realized you attributed the wrong actuator to the wrong drive, you can actually fix this without having to reconfigure your entire system. Simply navigate to the drive settings again, and from the actuator drop-down menu, you can reassign which drive is powering which actuator. Once you are done configuring your actuators, you can click on Check Configuration found under each of the drives to run the configuration checker. This will run the actuator through a series of tests to validate if it was set up correctly and prompt you to make the changes if there are any errors. If you'd like to see how this works, I invite you to check out the other video in our series on the configuration checker. 
Now, if for whatever reason you have to change the wiring configuration of your system, we highly recommend powering down the machine motion controller or placing it into e-stop prior to doing so. This will de-energize the motors, making it safe to unplug the motor cables. Once done with the configuration, we can move on to testing and validation. Having run your system through the configuration checker, it should be properly set up. However, we still recommend conducting some simple tests to make sure everything's functioned properly as intended. In the control center, navigate to the manual control tab. From the menu on the left, select which actuator setup you would like to validate. With the actuator selected, the main test that should be conducted would be to see if your end sensors are wired correctly. First, we'll test our home sensor. This can be done by switching the tab to home in the bottom corner and pressing play. A light up icon should appear next to the end stop sensor labeled home once complete. If this is the case, we can repeat this process for the end sensor. Again, change tabs to end and press play. If your sensors are not enclosed, you can also test their functionality by using a metallic object to trigger them. Now that the end sensors have been confirmed, your machine is configured and ready to run your programs. And with that, we've covered the connection and configuration of your machine motion controller. Thank you for watching this video, and please do check out the other videos in the series.